Reedsburg in the 70s. A lot of changes came to Reedsburg during the 1970s. The population grew twice as fast as the previous decade, going from 4,585 residents to 5,038 residents, an increase of 453. Much of the existing industry expanded and new plants came to town. Affordable housing was developed. Three new schools were built, two elementary schools, one at Rock Springs and the other on the west side. Madison Area Technical College also built a school on the west side for adult education. The medical facilities saw an impressive increase in the size of their campus. Local government saw the construction of a new safety building in City Hall. Utility Commission moved into their own building on South Willow Street. City government annexed almost 300 acres during the decade and saw a dramatic change to the east side in both retail and residential expansion. The city dump located at the south end of the airport runway closed and was replaced by the landfill site east of town. Cable TV was introduced to Reedsburg when 12 channels were offered. These included the four Madison channels, four channels from Milwaukee, a Chicago channel, a weather channel, which included music and information, a local programming channel, and a 12th channel to be announced later. The Woodridge Apartments by the new hospital opened in 1975. The Veterans Memorial at Webb Park was installed. In high school sports, the girls track team won the title for the very first state girls track meet in 1971. And two individuals won state championships in wrestling. Don Meyer won the heavyweight title two years in a row in 1974 and 1975. And Dwayne Schultz winning at 167 pounds in 1979. In 1970, 40 members of the local Senior Citizens Club visited the Playboy Resort at Lake Geneva during one of their monthly sightseeing excursions. Total membership of 125 local seniors got together every two weeks and considered themselves to be the most active senior group in the state. Celebrating the 4th of July has been going on here since 1849, when a homemade flag was sewn together using pieces of clothing donated by several residents. The Butterfest was created as a bigger and longer celebration, but switched to mid-June when they adopted the June is Dairy Month theme. Reedsburg also celebrated its 125th birthday in 1973 and the Bicentennial Celebration in 1976 turned out to be the biggest 4th of July celebration of the ball. Stay tuned for details about these events and more about what was going on in Reedsburg during the 1970s. Reedsburg industry experienced substantial growth in the 70s which brought more people to town. 14 manufacturing companies were present in Reedsburg in the 70s. The oldest company was Whitney Memorials, which started out prior to 1884, which was the year Sanford Collins bought out an existing monument maker. Collins' son-in-law, Cornelius Whitney, took over operations in 1934 and it was taken over by his son William in 1961. The second oldest company which began operations in 1899 was Reedsburg Foods. They canned 300,000 cases of peas and 300,000 cases of corn each summer. The Reedsburg Equity Co-op on Railroad Street started operations in 1912. They provided a place where farmers could get their grain crops ground into feed for their livestock, and buy seed for the next year's crop. Wisconsin dairies began operations in 1914, making condensed milk. By 1950, they were also making butter. They made so much of it, that Reedsburg was able to adopt the slogan, Butter Capital of the World. Meister Log and Lumber, began operations in 1934, on the corner of 3rd and Dewey Avenue. Their main product, was railroad ties, making up to 400 a day. 
They moved to their east side location near the corner of Main Street and County Highway H in 1947. Catastrophe struck in 1971 when their mill burned to the ground, but they rebuilt in the same location. National Sportswear started out in 1938 in the building at 139 East Main, but moved to new, larger quarters at 1111 Industrial Avenue in 1973. Their main product was women's blouses. In 1951, Grady Foundry bought the Reedsburg Foundry, that had been built in 1946, on the corner of Badger and Ash Streets. They made the switch to ductile iron castings in 1954. They provide products to the automotive, truck, engine, and construction industries. Reedsburg Pattern Works came into existence at the same time to build and repair molds for the foundry. Hankscraft, Reedsburg's largest employer, celebrated 50 years in business in 1970, although they didn't move to Reedsburg until 1949. 1970 was also the year they were acquired by Gerber Products of Fremont, Michigan. Hankscraft was best known for its line of nursery accessories, vaporizers, humidifiers and infant sundry items which was a perfect fit for the country's largest producer of baby food. Ray Zobel and Sons started in 1951, in the quarry and sawmill business, making gravel and lumber. They also do custom excavation, demolition, and haul dirt, sand and gravel. Seats, Incorporated, began making seats for lift trucks in 1952, with seven employees and 5,000 square feet of workspace, located at 350 North Dewey Avenue. By the 70s, they were building industrial seats for recreational vehicles, trucks and military vehicles. Selex built their first factory in 1961 on the corner of Badger and Lucky Streets. The president was Jim Conlin, and the rest of the partnership was made up of individuals from Hankscraft and Flambeau Plastics in Baraboo. Selex molded expandable polystyrene for packaging, initially for Hankscraft and Flambeau products. They expanded into point-of-purchase displays and shipped to customers nationwide. The House of Harmony started in Adams in 1964 and moved to Reedsburg in 1966. They moved into a building at 1200 Industrial Street. House of Harmony built mobile homes that sold on a nationwide basis. Addison Machine Engineering built their plant in the industrial park. They made rollers for the steel industry and did other CNC milling and lathe work for industry. Iberis International moved into a 10,000 square foot building across the street from Addison in 1978. 24-year-old Bob Krotner relocated his plastic injection molding business from Adams. He initially made mugs, trays and plates for Ingrid Limited, a Chicago-based distributor. The downtown continued to grow and change. In 1970, Nichols Rexall Drug Store 234 East Main, underwent a large remodeling project that eliminated one of the last old-fashioned soda fountains in the area. When the final phase of the work was done in 1977, one of the subcontractors that worked in the store was the notorious serial killer, John Wayne Gacy from the Chicago area. According to store owner Bob Vlock, Gacy started work in the late afternoon and worked almost straight through to the following night, before leaving town. Vlock said, he was in town for a maximum of 30 hours. Gacy was arrested on December 11 the following year, 1978, and was convicted of 33 murders of young males between 14 and 21 years of age. He was executed on May 10, 1994. Schultz Brothers Department Store, 164 East Main, revealed plans for a new store to be located on the northeast corner of Main and Webb Avenue, where the Chevrolet Garage was previously located. The store opened in September, 1970. The F&M Bank at 158 East Main, enlarged their offices by moving into the vacated Schultz Brothers Store. 
The toughest part of the expansion was moving the vault door to the other side of the building. In 1972, Roosevelt Harden, moved to town and opened a cafe at 47 East Main Street. He called it Rosie's Dream. It became a very popular location and in 1974, Rosie started a tradition by serving Thanksgiving dinners to senior citizens at no charge. Well, the first year they was uh, homeless, pretty much. They'd come down for the hotel, from the hotel. So I fed them. And so then the next year I thought, well, I'll just feed everybody. But we ended up, we fed everybody. Other locals volunteered their time to help prepare and serve the 400 dinners, made each year. When the restaurant closed in 1985, the Masonic Lodge assumed responsibility for the free senior citizen dinners each year which they serve at the Reedsburg United Methodist Church, Community Hall. <laughs> During this time period, 175 acres of land on the east side was developed into housing, recreation and shopping venues that greatly increased the city's tax base and provided shoppers with a lot more variety. Up until 1971, the first thing anyone coming into Reedsburg from the east, would see were lots of junk cars in the salvage yard at the corner of Main and County Highway H. Back when the salvage yard was started in this location in 1953, it was a predominantly rural area but the city limits were expanding further to the east as the city grew. The first order of business was to move the salvage yard. That happened when Lake developer N.E. Isaacson, better known as Ike, swapped properties with Jake Steinhorst, owner of the Reedsburg salvage yard. Ike, owned the property just across Main Street, next to the airport, and all inventory was transferred to the new location. The first improvement to the newly vacated land was the Voyageur Supper Club. Several investors, Jim Gavin, Bob Blakesley, Don Light, Bill Burning, Roger Friedy, Bob Fouch, Charlie Hamburg, Vic McDermott and, Ike, held a groundbreaking ceremony in September of 1971. They sold the restaurant in 1975 to Marv Hills, owner of the Reedsburg Motel at 1133 East Main Street, and the Tasty King restaurant. Marv had planned to expand his motel and restaurant business at that site but everything changed with the purchase of the Voyageur. In October of 1977, they broke ground for a multi-million dollar expansion that would include a convention center, swimming pool, health club and 75 rooms. Baraboo native, Bill Pierce, came to town in search of a location to build a grocery store. He crossed paths with Ike and they developed the Viking Village Mall which included the grocery store, a liquor store, restaurant, laundromat, and a drug store. Schultz brothers, who moved into a new store in the downtown area in 1970, moved into a much larger store that went up on the west end of the mall. Pizza Hut also built a store at the west end of the property. In April, 1973, another groundbreaking ceremony took place in town. This time it was for the construction of a 150-lot mobile home park, whose entrance was a block south of Main Street, across the street from the Viking Village Mall. They named it, Maple Air Mobile Village. The housing location was constructed by Joe Templin, Gordon McDonough and Bob Rezan. Reedsburg Healthcare. Reedsburg has always had someone to take care of the sick. The first hospital was in a home at 221 South Walnut Street, starting in 1902. By 1911, a former hotel across the street at 153 Vine Street was converted to accommodate patients. Both hospitals were within two blocks of the train station, which was convenient for surgeons arriving from Madison or Milwaukee if needed. In 1932, voters overwhelmingly gave the go-ahead for the new municipal hospital. Frieda Myers Nishan donated the land at 547 Park Street 
and by January 1933, the Reedsburg Municipal Hospital was open for business. There were 31 beds, along with the surgical and x-ray facilities. Total cost, $79,000. 19 years later, a 20-bit addition was built at the cost of $218,000. Plans for the third new hospital began in 1965 with an estimated cost of $2.8 million. 76 acres were purchased on the northeast side of town with the hospital to be located at 2000 North Dewey. A nursing home was also going to be built on the property with a $300,000 endowment by Edward Snyder. The ceremonial groundbreaking took place in July 1971 for the Edward Snyder Memorial Old People's Home. An open house took place in June 1972, and the 50-bed facility started accepting residents. By February 1973, plans for the new $3.5 million hospital were underway. The hospital on Park Street no longer met state and federal standards. Several fundraising efforts were started in the town by the middle of summer. Hank's Craft challenged its employees to raise $110,000, a goal they exceeded. A 50-person fundraising committee was formed in July. Co-chairman duties were shared by Ken Brenner, Jack Bull, and Ike Isaacson. Within one month, the various divisions had raised over $900,000 in pledges, enough to proceed with plans to advertise for construction bids by November, with groundbreaking scheduled for December. By July 1975, the Medical Arts Building began construction at the south end of the new hospital. The clinic consisted of four doctor suites and a pharmacy with adequate room for expansion. The plan was to provide office space for the local doctors who were currently scattered around the city in their own private offices. The clinic, which would be connected to the hospital, would provide a central location for all medical-related needs. Dr. Robert Knight and Dr. Victor Vergara took over two of the four suites. The open house for the recently completed hospital was January 24th and 25th. Over 3,200 people wandered the halls of the new facility and were provided with details on the new various parts of the hospital by staff. Patients from the old hospital were transferred to their new rooms in mid-February as everyone adapted to the new surroundings. Ambulance service. By 1973, new state laws pertaining to ambulance personnel and training were forcing the traditional funeral homes as ambulance service to drop out of the game. In June of 1973, a permanent ambulance committee was established. A van-type ambulance was purchased, and part-time people were trained as emergency medical technicians, EMTs, to operate the ambulances when emergencies arose. Old doctors, new doctors. Two long-time Reesburg physicians were honored for 50 years of medical service. Dr. Otto Polish was honored by the State Medical Society of Wisconsin. In addition to his medical practice, he also served as county coroner for 20 years. This ushered him into a club of 27 other doctors in the state who have achieved this milestone. Three years later, his neighbor and associate, Dr. Ernie Stadel, was also inducted into the club of 50 years medical service. By 1979, there were 34 members of this prestigious club. Another local doctor, Dr. John Hanko, had achieved the 50-year milestone back in 1963. He continued to practice medicine, reaching 61 years of service before retiring in 1973 at the age of 92. He died the following year. Dr. Victor Vigera, physician and surgeon, came to town in 1970, seven years before the Medical Arts Building was open. In 1976, Dr. Harchi Singh, who specialized in heart disease, set up his practice in the Medical Arts Building. Three new doctors were recruited to set up a family practice in the Medical Arts Building. Doctors Bob Mortimer, Jim Damos, 
and Mike Schoenfeld. All three finished their three-year residency in the E.W. Sparrow Family Practice Program at the hospital in Lansing, Michigan. They finished their residency on June 30th, 1977, and moved to Reedsburg the next day, anxious to get to work. Tri-County Human Services. By 1977, the Tri-County Human Services Center had grown to 140 staff members. Their Reedsburg location became the hub of a three-county comprehensive community mental health program, Juno, Richland, and Sauk Counties. In addition to building a new structure on the land formerly occupied by the Reedsburg High School, they also utilized the old hospital one block away. The building was used for the Tri-County Human Services Center inpatient and intermediate care unit. The 32-bed facility provided living units for patients undergoing various stages of treatment for alcoholism and drug dependency, ranging from mild to intensive, depending on the severity of their treatment requirements. Citizens of Reedsburg began celebrating our nation's Independence Day, the 4th of July, as early as 1849. Since they were without a flag, they decided to make their own using blue denim patches, red flannel shirts, and white petticoats. The stars were originally made with six points, but were converted to five points when the error was pointed out. A dinner was arranged with everyone contributing something from their meager supplies. Reverend Elder Locke delivered an address before they sat down to a meal that was thoroughly enjoyed by all. After dinner, a dance was arranged in the mill. Boards were laid to create a floor, and the first dance in Reedsburg was held, lit by candles and under the stars. The mill had no roof yet. Butterfist The Butterfist was created in 1971 when Ted Brecky, President of the Chamber of Commerce, and Charles Gill, past President of the Chamber, presented the City Council with the plan. The plan had been developed earlier by a committee made up of several members of the Chamber. A non-profit corporation was formed to assume responsibility for the festival designed to promote Reedsburg. The initial budget was set at $16,000 and the Butterfist was scheduled as a three-and-a-half-day event to take place over the 4th of July weekend. Butterfist was at Webb Park, the high school and the football field. Carnival rides were set up in the high school parking lot while the gymnasium and athletic field were used for musical performances. A drum and bugle corp competition started things off on Friday night at the football field. Saturday morning began with a parade down Main Street, while a chicken barbecue was set up in Webb Park along with other food and concession stands. A rock band performed Saturday night, and a Grand Old Opry show was Sunday night's entertainment. The following year, in order to take advantage of the dairy theme, the Butterfist was moved to the middle of June, since June was recognized as the Dairy Month. This also allowed more days and events to be added to the celebration. 1973 was a combined celebration of the Butterfist, the 125th Jubilee of Reedsburg, and the Fire Department Centennial. Major events included the parade, crowning of Miss Reedsburg, dances, an open house at the Fire Department, and the open house at the Historical Society and Pioneer Village grounds. Friday morning began with the June Dairy Month Farm Breakfast. Earlier in the year, in anticipation of the 125th Jubilee, all local men were asked to grow beards in recognition of our earliest settlers. Awards were presented for different categories of beards, all in good fun. The Bicentennial Celebration Reedsburg began preparing for the celebration in April 1975, when the Bicentennial Committee met for the first time. Ruth Stadel, who everyone called Billy, emerged as the chair of the committee. She announced that Reedsburg was proclaimed a city of flags, as well as officially recognized as a bicentennial city, which was verified by telegram received from the American Revolution Bicentennial Administration in Washington. As a city of flags, the call went out for everyone to fly a flag every day beginning June 14, which was Flag Day, until the end of 1976, a little over a year and a half. Flag Day was the official kickoff date for Reedsburg's celebration. A flag rally was held at the city's flag pole at the corner of Locust and Main Street before the start of the Butterfist Parade. Mayor John Bernian made a few remarks before presenting a flag to the Eagle Scouts who raised the flag while accompanied by a drum roll by the Webb High School Band. For the first time, Reedsburg was not only the butter capital of the world, 
It was also an official bicentennial city and city of flags. The 4th of July, 1975, was a warm-up for the bicentennial celebration scheduled for the next year. Festivities began at 10 a.m. at Webb Park and the high school gymnasium. There were movies, crafts, quilting, dolls, a pie-eating contest, dresses and styles, and several musical performances throughout the day. A chicken barbecue was served in Webb Park by the music parents along with ice cream and cake. At 4 p.m., designer Ed Schrang revealed the Reedsburg Bicentennial Monument and time capsule. He explained that the base of the monument was in the shape of a mound to honor the American Indian. Standing upright from the center of the base is a timber to honor the pioneers who settled in the area. An axe, used to harvest the timbers, was driven into the side of the monument. The axe was donated by resident and former mayor, Hilbert Kleber, whose ancestor Augustine Kleber settled in Reedsburg in 1850 after escaping from Germany. He added an extra E in his name when he arrived here, thereby changing it from Kleber to Kleber. Both his original name and arrival date were stamped into the head of the axe. A time capsule was placed into the base of the monument. It is filled with legal documents, newspaper clippings, and other artifacts that represent Reedsburg in 1976. The capsule is covered with a bronze plaque providing instructions that it is to be open on the 4th of July, 2076. Cost of the monument and time capsule was $10,000, and a fundraising campaign covered the full cost. The 4th of July of 1976 was a two-day event that once again filled Webb Park and High School with a wide variety of events and activities geared toward all ages. The event kicked off Sunday morning at 9.30 and the next two days included a wide variety of events and food enjoyed by thousands of people. The two-day celebration ended with a concert from the Bicentennial Band, directed by Webb Band director Roger Spindler. Following the concert, the night was capped with a fireworks display that was larger than usual. The last day of the year was bitterly cold, and it was also the day when the time capsule was dedicated in a short ceremony held at the monument. Billy had warm words of praise for the many, many people who worked with her on the various projects since the committee was formed 21 months ago. The dedication of the time capsule brought an end to one of Reedsburg's biggest celebrations. Turns out the world's most famous newspaper cartoonist in the early 1900s, Claire Briggs, was born in Reedsburg in 1875. His family lived here for nine more years before moving to Dixon, Illinois, and then to Omaha, Nebraska a few years later. It was the memories of his childhood time here that inspired him to create several cartoon series that were embraced by the entire country. Thanks to the efforts of Gordon Emery, Reedsburg has learned a lot about Briggs and his accomplishments. Beginning in 1965, Gordy spent the next 10 years researching the life and times of Claire Briggs. Since this was before the internet existed, everything was done by mail and lots of legwork. Piece by piece and year by year, Gordy was able to accumulate information about Briggs until finally he received a reply from a member of the Briggs family in 1976. They also included five original cartoons drawn by Briggs 50 years earlier. Claire is credited with creating the very first daily comic strip series that was syndicated by the Chicago American. It was a daily comic that ran on the sports page that gave readers a racehorse tip every day. The strip featured Mr. Clerk, a character with a gambling problem who placed daily bets on horses in the Chicago races each day. The following day, Clerk's win or loss was posted. The cartoon started in December of 1903, brought national fame to Briggs, but it was canceled in 1904 after just a few months of publication. However, it did inspire similar strips in other newspapers and eventually was responsible for the creation of the comics page in daily newspapers. He worked for Hearst Communications for almost 30 years in Chicago and New York. He created several popular cartoon series over the years, many of which became national catchphrases. Ain't it a grand and glorious feeling? Danny Dreamer, the days of real sport, Mr. and Mrs. How to Start the Day Wrong. 
there's at least one in every office. And when a feller needs a friend, Mr. and Mrs. Rand during the last years of his life and continued in syndication after his death under his name until 1963 while being drawn by other artists. When a feller needs a friend featured the names of several childhood friends from his years in Reedsburg. Due to his growing popularity, Briggs didn't confine himself to just drawing cartoons. In 1914, he appeared on the vaudeville circuit for five weeks. He was also a well-paid and popular speaker. There was even a product endorsement, Briggs Pipe Tobacco. Every can included one of his cartoon series, Catchphrases, When a Feller Needs a Friend. In 1919, he wrote and produced 18 films for Paramount Pictures. These were 10-minute, one-reel, silent black and white films based on his cartoon series, The Days of Real Sport. The character, Skinny, and his friends were portrayed by the same actors in all 18 films. The Mr. and Mrs. Radio series, based on Briggs' strip created in 1919, followed the combative marriage of Joe and Vi Green, a rundown, lower middle-class couple for whom the bloom of romance had long since shriveled into numbness. This show became the blueprint for later such battling spouse comedies such as The Nagers, a series of 18 short films, and The Bickersons, which started out as a radio program starring Don Amici. Each installment of Mr. and Mrs. focused on the antagonism and barely suppressed mutual loathing between husband and wife. Mr. and Mrs. caught on as one of the big successes of the 1930 radio season, and it was the first self-contained half-hour weekly situation comedy on network radio. Claire and his wife Ruth were married for 29 years and had three children. They divorced in February of 1929. Nine months later, in September, neuritis of the optic nerve led Briggs to Baltimore for treatment at John Hopkins Hospital. Shortly after his treatment at John Hopkins, he was admitted to the Neurological Institute of New York. He died there on January 3, 1930, due to pneumonia. As he had requested, his ashes were scattered over New York Harbor. One of his daughters, 21-year-old Claire, drew cartoons under the name of Miss Claire Briggs and was syndicated from 1939 to 1941. She visited Reedsburg in 1939. She made it a point to visit the old swimming hole made famous by her father down by the ballpark just south of the railroad bridge. She also wandered through his old neighborhood just a couple blocks away. Thanks to Emery's hard work and perseverance, Two historical markers were installed in Reedsburg. The largest one was issued as part of the Wisconsin State Historical Marker Program. It was placed two miles east of town, next to the Reedsburg Historical Society grounds. A smaller plaque was installed in Webb Park. Besides displaying many of the drawings in his store, Emory's Emporium, located at 249 East Main Street, Gordy also made available over 100 cartoons, which ran in the Times Press one a week for two and a half years. Many of the drawings are located at the Reedsburg Historical Society with the Briggs display. Another exhibit is located at City Hall near the council chambers. Several books of his cartoons were published and are available through the library and Amazon.